This is Clean Radio. Welcome everybody out there listening to Clean Radio. Oh, everybody out there listening on our flagship station, 790 KBC, or on XM Channel 165, <laughs> or at cleanradio.com. That's clean with a K. My co-host with the most uh, is Andrew Spanswick, who's in the studio with me. Hi, good evening, Judah. How are you? I am great. How are you doing? Good. Very good. Um, you look good also. I got to tell you. I'm, I'm going for sexy tonight. Yes. Uh, yeah. You're trying to bring it back. I'm trying actually. to bring it back, yeah. But we're a show about addiction and recovery. Why don't you tell people a little bit about what we're about? Well, we're about a show about addiction and recovery, people that are having problems currently, and then also people that have gotten sober and sharing their stories and talking about uh, current issues in recovery and how... Uh, Getting sober is a good thing. So who are you, though? Who am I? Oh, my uh, goodness. Yes. Uh, we, <laughs> and I'm not talking about, you know, psychotherapy. Who are you? Um, <laughs> it sounds like such a therapist question, yes, right? It does. Like, but you actually, you? you own, no, you know, I, you I, own. No, I have a uh, 22-year history of working in uh, acute care psych and uh, in uh, recovery industry. And uh, currently own clean treatment centers uh, along with a couple other people, a couple and, doctors. And you've managed to be uh, normal and uh, I've, I've, I'm working on normal. Yeah. I'm heading towards normal. You know, that's actually uh, that's actually a really <laughs> funny thing, though. What is normal? I mean, it, normal, I think, is the average by definition. But, you know, I, I don't know if I want to be average. So you could never be average in my book, yeah, Andrew. And also let's welcome Erica Spiegel, Abfab Spiegelman, Hi, um, guys. an amazing therapist. I uh, thought you had a new nickname yeah. for it tonight. We uh, do. We E-Speak. Do. No, no, no. no there's no, another there's one. Spiegel Beagle. No, sweet. It was something uh, nice. It was something yeah. nice. It was something endearing. Uh, he quickly and anybody forgot about there, that. Welcome to anyway. Clean Radio. Like we said, we're a show about addiction and recovery. Not nicknames. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and nick- no. yeah. And give us a call at 888. But the thing is, before I give the number, if your name is Judah, what's the nickname? That's why we came up with the Judah. The Judah. Yeah. yeah. You're just, you have, you're beyond nickname. You're, you're an icon. That's, that's. <laughs> well, he's, yeah. That's exactly right. Give us a call at 888-375-368. One three. That's eight 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 three seven five thirty six thirteen. Give us a call. I finally got the number correct. Yeah. There's a stud in your step, but yeah, you it's uh, but you're you sober. Know. It doesn't flow as like if you were. Like, That's exactly right. By the way, um, <laughs> you know, it's funny about that. Uh, I went to uh, the other day. We were eating lunch, and we were actually with our guest tonight. We, you know, we had a couple meetings on Friday, and afterwards, I went to buy a couple gifts. At right. the uh, twelve steps, one of the twelve step stores, and I'm not going to say the name because I got so aggravated. Isn't that the so, name of the store? Uh, okay, it is. Actually, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. and there's only like two of them in town. Uh, okay. so, I'm not so, going to say the yeah. name it's of okay. where I FedExed it from. Yeah. But. <laughs> so, uh, so I go to this store, and I know where it is. And I'm going to tell you, everybody out there that's listening, that know they can relate. You only leave your credit card in a store you never want to go back to. So uh, I'm in this store walking around, and they're it. and they're creeping me out. Anybody that's ever been to this store, it's a creepy uh, sort of place, and uh, so I'm trying to get gifts for a couple I've people. I like that store. I don't uh, know me why. Me too. Yeah. Um, I th- maybe you were. Oh, your opinion. Maybe yeah, you were getting. Are we little... talking about the one on San? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Maybe there was something else going on there, Judy. Yes. Uh, so here. So here. Are the rest of the story. So I go into the store. Like I'm looking for ecle- eclectic stuff to put people in a good mood that are sick, Han right. and Kev, who are going through, you know, a rough time. That are friends of Clean, and I got them some really cool gifts. And but the whole time they're st- they're going, can we help you? And I'm like, well, asking them questions, but they're not coming from behind the counter to help me. <laughs> and uh, so I leave the store finally. I pay, and I, I get a call 20 minutes later. They left my credit card there. Mm-hmm. So I say, you know, a, you know, one of the people at work for us is going to go down there and pick up the credit card. Her name is Nikki, who's helping out tonight. And uh, so Nikki calls me 30 minutes later, and they go, they go, that guy was so weird. They, you know, and they're like saying, and he smelled like weed and he smelled like pot. In the 12 steps. Tw- yeah, they said they he, he made the 12 steps. At step least they with- called in and, uh, and told you that your credit card was there. Yeah, and yeah. they said, they go, you smelt up the whole store. And I was with you, <laughs> Andrew, about an hour, like 10 minutes before. And I don't you know should- if you should be telling this story. <laughs> no, no, but the, st- the thing that's, the thing that's, uh, and Andrew and I talk about this all the time is, yeah. is, you know, thank God this hasn't happened to me, but many people out there are struggling and have relapsed and are sometimes scared to go back to 12 steps or to give people a call because of the judgment. So you feel like you were being judged? Though? I feel like I was being judged. I feel like for you, your appearance, you mean? No, because they thought they, you smelled like they, pot. They, they, they thought it smelled like pot and all that stuff. And, and maybe because maybe they thought, you know. I don't know where you were. No, I'm mean, just saying some people that go in those 12, you know, 12 step stores have been either using or maybe right. want to stop or, using right. or, you know, right. they're, they're so going they in to get information. But, but yeah. how, and, and the point is that you should always want to, uh, you know, make yourself, you know, 
we talk about this all the time. The you know, when people do relapse, they feel an uncomfortability sometimes in right. going back into the twelve step rooms because there is sometimes judgment. Oh, well, there can be, and yeah. I think that you know, yeah. there, there's. I but, think that the anxiety of going into a twelve step room is always there. Right. Well, they judge so, themselves. They judge themselves for the fact that they relapse. Exactly, you know? the shame and yeah. whatever. Right. The, these traditional problems we've had with. Uh, people dealing with addiction is not a serious illness or problem, but is something that is a societal ill right, right. and the fault of the individual. And the negative, the negative tape that goes on in their own mind constantly. And exactly. They're, they're, Self-blame. They're ashamed and, or disappointed yeah. in themselves. You know, that, that's, that's hard. Yeah, and thank right. God I could handle them, <laughs> them thinking this, but what about the person that it's is... like internalized that's user phobia. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You, you could handle <laughs> it. I could I mean, handle it, but what about the next guy that right. goes in that right. they're giving that stare yeah. to that right. went into that 12-step store to find... Right, right. And they got the oddest books there. By the way, and oh, that's um, a good point. That's a good point. And and that's all I'm trying to say. It, yeah. it, it's it's where's that love and tolerance, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, that's what we are really a show about. It's like no matter what you're going through, if you're driving out there, you're listening at home. If you're anywhere and you're going through a rough time right now, you're not alone. Give us a call. Right. We want we want to yeah. re- help you relate and make you feel like you know you're not alone at all. And uh, yeah, and the number, give us a call at 888-375-3613. That's 888-375-3613. And uh, there's a really interesting story. I mean, uh, there's obviously a lot of, uh, with pot right now, it's a hot topic. And, um, you know, so there's a whole thing of the Huffington Post with, uh, you know, about drinking. It's not no longer drinking and driving. It's being stoned and driving. Well, it's always been out there. I mean, yeah. I think people are getting more awareness about it. In fact, it's illegal to drive on any substance that alters your consciousness. Yeah. And we have huge problems now with people with just general prescription drugs. Um, you know, Valium in 1974, was, there was 2.4 billion pills sold of Valium alone. That was the peak year for Valium. Yeah. So I don't know how somebody makes 2.4 billion of anything, but you know. Right. <laughs> but, and you but, always uh, hear people say they drive better when they're high. No, you don't. Those, well, those yeah, are the people that are high. It's only the people that are high. It's the same people. It's the version of alcoholics that say, "I don't right. vodka doesn't smell." Yes, it does. There actually <laughs> is a study that said that people that are alcoholic do drive better when they're drunk because they have to drink to be functional. And well, that's, that's, that's and a that, great public and service that, announcement. And, and the binge drinkers actually are more prone to get an accident when they're hungover than when they're drunk. Which I, is I interesting as well, right. right? So there's a lot of post-drunk driving that's related St- to alcohol that doesn't, good, yeah. that doesn't actually get reported as related to alcohol-related accidents. So a great public service. Yeah. Interesting, no, yeah. 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 And uh, let's welcome also, we have an amazing guest in the studio tonight. Uh, her name is Ashley Loeb. She started this amazing uh, program, co-founded an amazing program called Lion Rock Recovery. And uh, we gave it a shout-out last week to one of our callers. And I, I'm, if he's listening tonight from Orange County... I uh, hope you gave it a shot, but it's an online rehab, and uh, you got to move a little closer. Intensive outpatient. Intensive outpatient, Ashley. And uh, welcome to Clean Radio, Ashley Loeb. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. And um, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, why you started uh, Lion Rock? Yeah, absolutely. Um, We we started, I started Lion Rock Recovery with... um, a business partner, Ian Crabb, and my father, Peter Loeb, as a result of dealing with addiction in our family. And um, my aunt actually passed away um, from alcoholism in 2010. Um, we we figured out that you could use you could use video conference to have conversations about a lot of different things, and that it was a very personal connection. And as a result of you know. All, all the stuff that had gone on in my family, we wanted to find a way to help people who wouldn't otherwise get treatment, um, who might be in rural areas, who might be abroad, who might travel a lot, whatever the situation was, to get help before they hit their massive bottom, before they lost everything. We felt that there was a, um, a real a market for that. Um, my father and Ian Crabb, uh, my business partners, are uh, – technology entrepreneurs and um, and I'm sober seven years and have been in many different treatment centers so we combined our experiences and have created our intensive outpatient program at Lion Rock Recovery. It's so fantastic. No it is because mm-hmm. you know and Andrew and I were discussing this but I know Aunt Erica you actually do treat clients via Skype. Yeah via Skype through the phone but there's also a lot of clients that I know that travel for work and that really you know can't go into a treatment center as an outpatient center or people that live abroad and have to you know go back home or live in rural areas like you were saying there's really not that much you know for them so this sounds like it would be a great option 
Yeah, it's been, um, we've had a lot of success with it. And uh, actually, a lot of people in Canada have been coming to us, um, you know. It's because it's so cold in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they right. They, you're like the part, yeah. right. Hey, yeah, there's like, nothing else. I'm drunk and I'm yeah. not going outside. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, but technology <laughs> these days is really helping with people yeah. that that want therapy because Skype is so, it's very, it's personable. You know, you they can see the person. They actually don't use Skype, but they use yeah. a different program. Yeah, but, but it's yeah, the same. Right. It's same the idea. same. We yeah. have, yeah. you know, we have groups where people from all over the world are having a group and having a, you know, getting treatment. And, and there is a difference between treatment and support groups and yeah. support therapy and Alcoholics Anonymous. And this provides, you know, there might be there might be support groups in the area, but this provides actual drug and alcohol treatment. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think it's all important. And I think that there's a full continuum of care everywhere from online treatment to in-person yeah. meeting a doctor Absolutely. in a doctor's office to an intensive outpatient program where you show up with groups with live people mm -hmm. to residential treatment to acute Absolutely. care detox in hospitals. And all these pieces really don't compete with each other. It's yeah. It takes all these pieces, I think, over a long period of time for people to continually be working on not just getting sober, but staying sober. And, and you never know yeah. which of them is going to take you to the place you need to get to to get help. Yeah, you know, the more exposure and the more right. access people have to treatment, the better. It sounds um, like it's education no matter, you know, which way you go. At least you're, you're doing something. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you just tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio. That's Clean with a K. Give us a call at 888-375-3613. That's 888-375-3613. Let's go to Macy in Birmingham, Alabama. Welcome back to Clean Radio, Macy. Hey, you guys. Hi, thank Macy. And hey, Erica. Thank you for sending me that literature. I got it in the mail. Oh, you're welcome. Well, let's, uh, Macy, you you called last week, I think, about your son. And yeah. um, how's he doing? He's not doing good. Um, he's relapsed, and um, he's living on the street for the very first time, and I'm experiencing that feeling like someone's mm. kicked me in my stomach, not knowing if he's dead or alive. It's a lot of anxiety. But, um, yeah, he's an opiate addict, and um, he went on a really big binge and stole from my parents, and they kicked him out of the house. And he's been there eight years, but we really didn't know about the drugs until last year. And he's mm. been in two rehabs, and he told me that he just can't quit doing it, and he's doing Roxy's now, and he said they're his life. He's and doing that what? Really Roxy's. Roxy's. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say it right now. I don't know what Roxy's are. I don't it's know it's a, it's, a, it's basically a, a pill. Oh, okay. Yeah. An opiate. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He he snorts those. Yeah. But, um, did you did you talk to him about the boundaries that I sent you? I sent her something about boundaries and kind of had yeah, to. Yeah, she did. Yeah. yeah, and that really helped a lot. Okay. And I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and so, did, didn't you start a support group or you were you, you sent me something that you're you're going to a support group has that helped i'm or? in a support group online and um it's called mothers of addicts right and we would love to have you join our group i it's know so awesome i will there's 600 mothers there and um i learn a lot from them but i didn't even know what roxy's were until i went to my group but apparently it's synthetic heroin mm -hmm. But, well, um, it's, yeah. it's it's hydrocodone in a way, but it's yeah, it's a form of synthetic. Uh, it's a, it's an opiate. It's the same class of drug, so it has the same sort of effect. Um, and we're seeing more and more of this. Um, oxycodone is a more common form, and that's obviously uh, more well known in the media. But there's a whole range of drugs that opiate addicts will use, and they will, not only will they use that, but they'll also top up with heroin. And the pills are very expensive on the street. They're twenty to thirty bucks normally. Yeah. And so you're looking at a situation where when, you know, people run out of money, they start switching to heroin because it's cheaper. But it's okay. much more dangerous because it's harder to regulate the dose. So people are more likely to overdose. But I think the amazing thing that Mary's doing is she's taking care of herself. Mm -hmm. And I think that everybody out there that's listening, that's struggling with a son or husband or mm -hmm. anybody in their family with addiction is that she's, take, she's getting better herself. Because she's learning. Because right. yeah. she's learning and, and she's, she's being open right. to how to deal with and him. Event, and eventually... God willing, when he wants help, right. you're going to know exactly what to do, and he's not going to know how to take advantage of you or any of these things. So you're setting yourself up to help. Well, she's trying to be healthy yeah. for herself. Right. So if she, you know, but like, that's like so anybody. Important. Yeah. That is so important. And yeah, it's, it's one putting the, the mask on first before right. you put exactly. it on the kid. That's like exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. And that's right. one of the we things that we really do encourage people to do is, you know, the, the, the group that you're, you've started or you're helping out with, going to Al-Anon, going to different meetings out there so you know how to deal with these situations. Family group. Right. Yeah. It's really important. 
My question is, yeah. if he's been on these drugs for so long, ever since he became an adult, how do I know if there's something else going on? I've never known my son as an adult. Well, it's almost, I mean, I don't it's know almost certain that not. it's almost certain that he's probably using multiple substances. In fact, that's what we see these days is it's rare for people to only have one addiction. We call that poly substance abuse. So, but he'll have a drug of choice. So his drug of choice is an opiate. So which is a classification of drugs. And there's a bunch, like I said, there's a bunch of different ones. There's heroin, there's oxycodone, there's, it goes on and on hydrocodone, Vicodin, Norco, which are forms of hydrocodone. So there's multiple drugs that he'll use to try and get the same effect. Um, people that use that opiates tend to also use benzodiazepines, which are like Valium, Xanax, uh, Clonopin, um, to name a few. Uh, and they'll use those because it makes them feel a little bit more high. Um, and can add to the high. So uh, you tend to see a mixture of drugs, uh, you know, and generally people don't start off using opiates. They generally graduate to opiates from something else. It's rare to see people start off using opiates. So he's probably drinking and doing other things as well. Are, are you but, saying you don't know him, meaning like you don't know him emotionally because he's been doing drugs his whole adult life? Yeah, and I don't know if he's uh, got something else going on, like a mental illness, because I've never known him as yeah. an adult. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know what? Emotionally, he's he's probably stunted himself because he started doing drugs at such right. a young age, and so he probably doesn't know himself either. Um, and but also, you can't tell if he has a mental illness or not until you until right. he details. That's right. what I think she's asking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, he, you said he'd been in rehab twice before, though, right? He's been in rehab a lot the last year. We didn't even know about the drugs until the last year. We just thought there was something mental going on because uh -huh. he lived with my parents. He couldn't keep a job. How old is he now? He 26. He probably, mm. he probably, you know, you, you don't know for sure, but until he gets off the drugs, yeah. we can't diagnose and see what else is maybe going on with right. him, whether there's depression or bipolar. But also drugs can cause temporarily right. different levels of psychosis um, down to depression, anxiety disorders. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, he might need some secondary treatment. I mean, that's yeah. one of the things we really specialize in at Clean is we talk a lot about dual diagnosis, yeah. which means that we work with psychiatric disorders secondary to substance abuse disorders. Ma so. Yeah, Mary, um, the, I mean, obviously you're doing amazing stuff taking care of yourself. And, you know, give us a call anytime you need any help. Sure. And yeah, and keep in touch, and, and I'll definitely join yeah, that group. and give us a call back whenever you want. But also take our 888 number. It's 888-601-6040. And if you ever have any questions or if he's ever ready to get help, yeah. just give us a call, and we'll be there the second we could anything we could do. And don't you think she should keep asking him and just you know just you never know when. It'll you never hit. know when you know that's a great point you raise actually because, like because, with because your story, I you know? always say that it's like yeah. uh, you know as my father used to say Mary as long as my son was alive there's a chance. So you right. constantly even if it's just once a week you say are you ready yet? Right, I think that. And would you be never good. know he might one day say yes. Yeah. And okay. so always keep that door open. But Mary, thank you uh, so much for the call. Yeah. Take care of yourself. And yeah. And uh, if you just tuned in, it's you're listening good. to Clean Radio. That was Mary, who's calling from Alabama, whose son is basically Andrew, right? Dual diagnosis. He's has mental, you know, mental problems and drug addiction. So it sounds like just from yeah. the limited yeah. information we have. Of course, we don't really know because right. we haven't met him. But you know, there's a lot of hope there. I yeah. mean, well, yeah. and she's been know. taking care of herself. She's she's kept in contact yeah. with me and asked me really specifically how to deal with situations. So I've tried to guide her as much as I can, you know. But at the same time, I think you know she's getting the support she needs. She's reaching out to a community of people. She doesn't feel alone. And these are all good things that emotionally help people, help and people get by. The day tough to day. part is sitting there waiting for the oh, addict to bottom yes. out and yeah, change. It's, and, right. it's probably yeah. the toughest thing. And I think we're all in here. Ashley Loeb from Lion Rock Recovery. You know, you were, a, you were, a, you drove your parents almost to the point of, and we were met with your dad the other day. And it's a great story because you're no different. No, definitely not. Definitely not. And, and I put my parents in the same um, situation where wondering, you know, when, where I was, what was wrong with me? Was it dual diagnosis? I was just thinking, you know, um, there were so many, I went to all these doctors who would say, you know, oh, she's bipolar, she's this, she's that. And, you know, and half the time I was coming off cocaine or, you know, on hair, you know, it, there was no way to do you know, a, an accurate diagnostic on me until I had detox. How often, though? I'm always curious to know this. Did they ever say, are you on anything right now? I, 
I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, good addicts yeah. will use it. I mean, you yeah. know, good addicts will use mental it. health yeah. issues to try and get other drugs. Oh my God, and, yeah. Oh, and you know, it, yeah, especially absolutely. like benzodiazepines. Absolutely. I mean, that's an easy one. You know, yeah. you just walk into your doctor, say yeah. you're anxious, and boom, you got a script. So. Yeah. You know, it's funny when you know when I, I, I I've been in six rehabs, but the question they always ask you when you go into rehab is how much were you drinking or how much were you using? And I was right. like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like if I knew how much, I probably wouldn't be in rehab. And, <laughs> Enough uh, to come to see you. Right. That's exactly right. I never knew what to answer. But well, I it's know like, you know, when people turn up in AA and they're questioning whether they're an alcoholic, it's like odds are if you showed up in the right. room, there's a reason for it. And so. usually you're not counting. Right. There's, you're past that point. No, I mean, I, right. That's uh, like, right. It's pot and addiction. If you're asking, it probably has affected you. And pot's a tough one, too, yeah. because, you know, the, you don't know what the dosage is and you're smoking. So, you know, if you're mm-hmm. sm- so it's really, you know, what we talk about is what are real indicators of addiction beyond just how much you take. Right. And that's like really what effects it has in your life. So if the you're consequences, yeah, yeah, if you're missing out on work, if your relationships are falling mm-hmm. apart, if you feel unhealthy, right. if, you know, you're making decisions to not do things because you want to get high or drink instead, yeah, you know, these are the basic sort of criteria that we look at and and whether you're fully addicted at that point or just abusing drugs and or alcohol at that point it's still a good time to get help you know even if you aren't a full-blown addict right the sooner you can get help and get things under control the better, the better off you are yeah and there's a lot of help out there and there's a lot of different ways to address it and i think that's what we're all about it's it, we're not just saying clean 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 we're saying there's so many avenues tonight we have on the show with us ashley love from Lion Rock Recovery, and it's really an amazing tool out there because as we are, I mean, you have so many kids out there that literally don't know what it is to get on a bus. <laughs> you know, they sit at home, they text each other, and their intercourse with life, what a word, uh, is is uh, Skype, is the internet. It's called interaction with Inter- life. Right, right, right. right. But, and, and I love the, the service that you're offering these people is you're saying, okay, you're an addict. You know, and I'm sure we're going to hit a whole new generation of game addicts, of right. internet addicts. We are, well, we have already them. Are, yeah. Yeah. And They're if you just there. tuned in, you are listening to Clean Radio. Give us a call at 888-375-3613. Whatever you're going through, we'll get to you, Denise, after the break. But please give us a call. That's 888-375-3613. The discussion continues at cleanradio.com. Um, we'll talk to you in a second. Are you struggling with an addiction that's ruining your life? Want to have a confidential conversation with a professional that will immediately assist you? Do you suspect a loved one is abusing drugs and would like a free drug testing kit and consultation? Clean Treatment Center is standing by right now to help those with addictions and the people who care about them. Call 888-601-6040. That's 888-601-6040. Or go to Clean Treatment Center, that's clean with a K, cleantreatmentcenter.com. Now back to Andrew Spanswick and Judah Friedman. Bob Forsen, you're seeing the Smiths. You are babbling on the radio, Andrew Spanswick. I'm sorry, and, I, uh, I was just enjoying a way. You're, you're enjoying the, the music, out. it's great. Um, you, know. you know, this is, you know, I posted a, welcome everybody out there listening to Clean Radio. I did post the other day on Clean, on Clean Radio on Facebook, and I said, you know, because I'm constantly asked this question, and we're all relatively young in the, uh, studio tonight except for you andrew and uh wow no, really that's not nice. no no it's wow. not nice but uh He's very it, young. no andrew's actually very young i'm and actually young. i'm actually old with wisdom and i'll take that yeah <laughs> <laughs> you better and um but somebody was you know oh people constantly ask us is sobriety fun it's one of the biggest questions we get asked is you Absolutely, know yeah. and and i love the question because before people ever got high nobody ever said is it supposed to be and it's not just fun it's yeah. like will i be able to function and right. do anything like so many people like i have a good friend right now that's going through a problem and just uh, trying to get off of alcohol and he's an artist and he's just freaking out he's like i haven't done anything in my life without using right, right. and he's so scared that if he stops drinking he's not gonna be able to function i'm like you're not functioning now right yeah it's you know? fear-based because yeah. they don't know themselves that's you know, it's the part of that part. denial process yeah. of not really wanting to accept that, you know, they have a problem and coming up with an excuse. And I think that, you know, saying that the way I live and who I am is really It's very intertwined, though, you know, if, especially if he's an artist and then probably the environment he's in. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, you know. It's, One of my favorite stories, and this supposedly happened, is somebody's at a meeting and they see Eric Clapton, who's broken his anonymity, so I'm not breaking it for him. <laughs> and they're, they're, they're sitting at a meeting and they're saying how they don't know if they'll be able to play music again. They don't notice him. And, you know, mm-hmm. like their, their career is over and he turns around to them and he goes, it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, that's just like, you know, it's Eric Clapton. You know what I mean? Like, so also yeah. we're in the studio right now with uh, Ashley Loeb from Lion Rock Recovery. Um, 
Welcome back to Clean Radio. Let's just go right to the calls because yeah, we have Denise up. in New Jersey. Welcome to Clean Radio, Denise. Hi, Denise. Hi, guys. Hi, Judah. Hey, Denise. Finally, with the new time slot, somebody <sighs> from the East Coast. Yeah. 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 Fans yeah. out here can call in, stay awake. Exactly. Are you, That's listening on, uh, are you listening on XM or are you on the Internet? I actually was listening upstairs, but the whole family's watching the Ranger game and thought I'd come down mm. here. Don't tell Andrew and I Don't score. tell the score. We I got like it on TV. <laughs> 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 We're like two sports fans in L.A. We're in the uh, minority. Well, you might hear them scream. Okay, so. well, that would be good. <laughs> anyway, you know, I had to call in, um, and thank you guys. Um, every week after week, your message is hope, and um, you help a lot of people in addiction and recovery, and you I certainly really help that. families. It's of so loved nice. ones, including myself, a parent of an addict. And uh, I just wanted your listeners to know that when the show ends, that the genuine care and uh, support doesn't stop. And, you know, Judah, you've been there for me on many occasions, whether it was to ask your advice or pick your brain, and I appreciate it. And Not much can when you your listeners pick my would brain. Want to know. No, thank That's you very nice. much. That's uh, nice thank you very that. much, Denise. Okay. And, and, you know, and... It, I love, listen, my parents almost got destroyed by, you know, alcoholism, and that was me. And I, I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful for the programs out there that really brought my family back together. And when I say this stuff, I mean it. You know, I've seen things get better that you never in your wildest dreams thought would be repaired. And I've seen that, Denise. And, you know, and it's 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 an amazing thing. I mean, Andrew, you see it all the time. And, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's just... Uh, you know, everybody in this room is doing this yeah. for more than just, you know, a right. living yeah. and a career. Right. It's about a passion. And, um, you know, I, I help so many people every day that just call me randomly mm-hmm. um, because they know what I do for a living. Right. Yeah. So I become like the default it call happens. from like yeah. a group of friends. And but, you know, it's uh, it drives whoever I'm dating at the time nuts. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> or married at the time. Or married at the time. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But, you know, Denise, I, I, want you, I want you to hear somebody in the studio. We have Ashley with us. And Hi, Ashley, how, how old are you? Hi. 26. So you got sober when you were 19? Yes, I did. And wow. um, she put, you know, we met her dad the other day. Her dad's a really nice guy. His name is Peter Loeb. And, you know, it, it was really cool listening to watching them intermingle because she you put him through hell. Uh, yeah, that, that's one word for it. And mm-hmm. seven years later, they've started a company together that's out there to help people. That's yeah. hope. So See, that's, I can't yeah, think yeah. of a better hopeful story. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, it's, I, I, I had a sister who wouldn't talk to me and, and um, you know, and I totally destroyed my family life and and now I have that back and that's as a result of a lot of family groups and time and effort and my changing and their changing and it's been a really great thing. Denise, by the way, thank you so much for the call. Thank you. And thanks uh, for the support. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And um, if you just tuned in, you're listening to Clean Radio. That's Clean with a K. We were on the phone with uh, Denise uh, from New Jersey, uh, my new hometown since my whole family migrated there <laughs> um they couldn't migrate somewhere not, no i love new jersey um and her son you know she's dealt with addiction and she's still dealing with this we have had two calls tonight with people that are struggling with their children yeah yeah, yeah. young adults really yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean that's the thing you know addiction really starts to kick in now earlier and earlier and what the alcohol it used to be people wouldn't really bottom out until their late 30s early mm-hmm. 40s but now we see with all these prescription drugs People six months yeah. to two huh. years in are bottoming out. Well, and so, they, right, because or they're dying. It's or they're so dying. easy yeah. to get these drugs. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like it used to be, it was hard to get drugs. I mean, well, part of that is we have an aging population as well. So you have a lot more stronger yes. narcotics on the street that are being legally prescribed, and people are stealing those or right. taking them from yeah. you know their loved ones. that you know, well, Their grandmothers, the, their aunt's house. I, right. I mean, clients tell me how they get their drugs all the time. I mean, a big thing is that people need to know that when you're done with like your script from your dentist of Vicodin, throw the rest down the right. toilet because right. people will take them out of your out yeah. of your medicine. Put it chest. in a safe, I don't know, somewhere. There's actually yeah. an amazing story out there, by the way, right now in uh, the medical news today that teen addicts who help others improve their chance of sobriety. I mean, which is, like, I guess, the constant thought of all alcoholics helping Giving others. Back, yeah. right. But I think for teens, it's extremely important, you know, because... You know, yeah. it's also reminding yourself of what it's like to be out right. using, you yeah. know, well, it, and you know, if you're young, I think especially it's easy to forget, you yeah. know, if you haven't had a long process of destroying right. yourself. There's some <laughs> great prevention programs and mentoring programs that teens can get involved in, too, out there. And actually, yeah. you were a teen. Yeah. I mean, I th- I thought my life was over. I was sure of it. And and the truth was, is that my life had been over for a long time before that. There was no fun. But I was 
really afraid of what, you know, a sober life was going to look like. And I, I have way more fun in sobriety than I ever did using. But I also went to college sober and, and wow. you know, and, and I didn't live in the dorms. But Erica, yeah. think how much we could have learned. That's yeah. so, I know, really. So yeah. much more time and yeah. energy. <laughs> well, I was always amazed by you two. And I'm sure Ashley was too. Like, Erica and Andrew, you guys amazed me. Like, I would look at people that went through college and go, That's they can't insane. be alcoholics. <laughs> I don't okay? know. Yeah. I would look at it and go, how is that it. possible? I, I couldn't know. even make it to the dorms of a college. I don't know if that says something about you or the school or... No, I think that has... Says, you know Tulane I University Andrew, is not yeah. known as a dry school. No, but I think it's actually a very interesting <laughs> question is that because people that get in when they're younger have had no manageability. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys had a form... Well, there's different... Of, I think this yeah. concept that addiction looks the same in every person it's, is yeah, not exactly. correct. Yeah, right. Point. And, um, you know, there's some people, they take one drink and they're off the races. You see that change in their eyes and they just become somebody else right away. Right. And there's some people, it takes them 30 or 40 years before, you know, it becomes unmanageable. Yeah. And uh, so you never really know. It's different for different people. Or you can get through it, which, you know, I the motions of going through school, which I did, but internally, I don't think I was really present learning much and at the same time i really wasn't happy so and everything right that's you know, the other thing right. what is functioning and what I mean, yeah you put on a mask you smile you go to parties you you engage in the environment but that doesn't necessarily mean you know internally everything's okay and yeah. i think that's what people even in college now that maybe you're listening you know it's good to check in with yourself and really ask yourself are you enjoying your are life are you maximizing you know, you, right yeah. yeah and if you just tuned in you're listening to clean radio give us a call at 888-375-3613 that's 888-375-3613. Let's, let's, go to, call. let's go to Denise in L.A. Welcome back to Clean Radio, Denise. Hi, this is Denise in, in L.A., another yeah. Denise, with, yes. as a parent. And I wanted to echo the same thing that he said. Just thank you guys for the support that I've gotten. I called in last week, and my son still is not in agreement to going into treatment, but someone did call him and talk to him mm-hmm. and confirm that his insurance would, would pay so maybe there's there's some hope, and I'm just hoping that it is. But I wanted to echo the same thing. That and the other Denise, if I remember correctly, your son's in Washington D.C., right? Or yes, yes. And he's struggling with what? Alcoholism. He started drinking in college, and he's mm-hmm. just turned 28. Mm-hmm. I remember the call from last week, uh, Denise. Yeah, it's um, well, it's great that at least he knows there's an opportunity out there. And, you know, a person has to be ready to get help. And uh, sometimes when you see people go through multiple treatment centers, um, it's because they were pushed in too early. And, um, you know, you want a person to get sober as quickly as possible, but you also want them to know that they really are ready to get help because it's it's an intensive experience. Right, and I appreciate that. Because I'm doing Al-Anon and I'm doing group and I'm doing right. take care of myself. So, um, again, I so appreciate the support that I got from your team that you, called and listened and gave phone numbers and, you know. Right. And this is even, this uh, is what you're doing is the right type of help. It's it's providing an access and a way out. It's not enabling your son just to keep drinking. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's good parenting. That's that's being a good friend to your son. That's someone that really cares. Right. Because we discuss this right. all the time. Andrew and I discuss this all the time. We're very against tough love, you know, yeah. with the theory of tough love, of kicking people out. And I, and I, pre- and I appreciate that because as a parent, it's really difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really difficult to say I'm just going to, you know, throw my hands up. You know, I talked to, you know, one of your intervention persons and I was like, well, I was to the point to call his employer. Because mm-hmm. right now he's, he's still working, and we know he's not going to continue to have a job, but at least now he can get into a good program like Clean and get some help because he has insurance. Right. Well, but, you, know, you it's, know, it's very much, right. Um, it's very common for people to be angry at the addict, and part of that is cultural because we've always thought of for a long, long time addiction especially, <laughs> you know, was thought of as something that was a moral failure of the individual. Or and, a choice. Right. And we've yeah. now learned from science that it's not, that there's actually physical changes in the brain that occur over mm-hmm. time from the use of substances. And it gets to the point where the person can't stop and that, that drug or that substance controls their life or process, mm-hmm. like with shopping addiction or gambling addiction or sex and love addiction. But, um, you know, you're doing the right thing. You're, you're setting a platform for him to get help, to get recovery. Um, it's, it's just now a matter of him coming to terms with the fact that uh, he's got a problem. And hopefully uh, that will be sooner than later. Well, ho- hopefully it will, and hopefully he'll 
come to one of your treatment centers. Yeah. I've heard nothing but good good news. And if the other parents out there listening, you guys do what you say and say what you do. And thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Denise. Yeah. We're yeah. always here for you. And listen, I don't know if you're on Facebook, but go to Facebook. Go to fa- uh, Facebook slash Clean Radio. Or you know we have an amazing uh, we have an amazing site where people actually connect with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, a lot of discussions it's a community. and it's a community, and it's something we really wanted to set up because we realize it's you know pe- you shouldn't be alone. Yeah. And, and yeah. what you're going through right now, so many people are going through right now. So Andrew. many people. Yeah. yeah. And I don't say that for the effect. I say that because that's reality. And I it, it, the the courage that it takes you to call in and talk about this denise is amazing so thank you so well, much I, I, I need it for me and thank you and i will because i'm looking for a sponsor so i will connect with facebook and, yeah. and i'm looking to work, work the steps and, and take care of me yeah and denise That's if you gorgeous. have any questions just private question you did a private message on facebook if you're looking for people in al we could really send you in the right direction i know a lot of people okay okay thank you thank, thank, care. thank you thank you denise. Denise. take care and uh if you just tuned in you're listening to clean radio that was uh denise who's you know, struggling with uh, her son who's, uh, you know, living in Washington, who's battling alcoholism, and he's not ready. And yeah. I think this is another example of where, you know, uh, people have to realize that addiction really does affect the whole family. It's a family Absolutely. illness, yeah. and, and yeah. It, it, you know, there's a therapeutic component where families members can be helped just as much as the addict, and it takes everybody coming together to really get full resolution mm-hmm. and, 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 and a healthiness in the both people's lives both and, and, and you never know who's going to be that influences one another sometimes if the parent gets healthy the the, the child will see that or if the child that happened you know, in my case it, my yeah. parents you never started know which getting way. better yeah. when, I got when angry. you, when oh, you really? stop conning them out of money that's what i used to say i used to tell yeah. them that alcoholics anonymous meetings cost ten dollars <laughs> and they started going to al on and they stopped giving that to me uh, and i don't know if i would have been able to get sober with that ten dollars yeah by the way all listeners alcoholics anonymous is absolutely free <laughs> but I had this con going. I would tell him it cost ten dollars to go to meetings. How long did you keep that up? How long did that work? The for truth you? be told, I think my parents probably knew I was lying, See how the li- uh, but the they were just keeps... willing to say, "Okay, fine. Here's ten bucks. We maybe know you're gonna go, maybe to a meeting, you go to the meeting, but yeah. you'll drink after. It's okay." They right. they were okay with that. But Ashley, you were actually we're in the studio tonight with uh, <laughs> Ashley Lowe from uh, Lion Rock Recovery. But you were telling me about when you were in treatment, you had to get fully honest with your family. Yeah, I had to, (laughs) I had to, my poor family, I had to sit down and tell them every drug I used, how I administered it, everything I'd ever done. And um, I I went to, um, I went to a number of treatment centers starting 15, 16, 17, 18. And, um, and I was, I was in for two years actually. And when I was in those adolescent uh, treatment facilities, I had to tell them everything. And I'm not sure that telling them everything. Yeah, did you need to tell yeah, them Yeah, I, well, I was required, oh, but. Okay, um, okay. <laughs> Who ran this place? Yeah, I, I know, yeah. I, my poor fit. I yeah. can, Sometimes too much information. Yeah, yeah it was, right. it was definitely, my dad has some good stories Except about it. Except to do so yeah, would injure we, them or others. Oh, didn't we just, weren't we just talking about the dentist that was putting people under and molesting people, and then really? they, the police actually went and told oh. every Everybody that, yeah, that had that possibly been molested, yeah. and the guy was like, "I really didn't want to know that." Yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. I always joke if Jerry Springer calls up my house and the people from that, I'm going to be like, "I n- no no speak English." <laughs> yeah, there's certain things you want in the past. Um, but if anybody- that's interesting. Luckily, interesting. we were able to get through. You know, we were able to get through that. But it it um, you know, I wouldn't say everything they needed to know, but they definitely needed to understand um, addiction and have the education right. about addiction in a way that they didn't. You know, they really they came into it wondering why I couldn't stop and mm-hmm. whether it was a moral failing. Right. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was. And and that um, all those family workshops and groups where I, um, for better or for worse, told them everything. But what's amazing well, the about concept, that. Well, the concept behind that is honesty. I mean, that's, right. you know, totally. it, which is which is fine. And right, I, I wouldn't right. want someone out there who's, you know, diehard AA fan and, you know, says that, oh, you know, they're poo-pooing being honest about exactly what you've done with everybody. I think the question is, you know, how revealing do you have to be in detail? I think you need right. to be revealing enough that they take it seriously and they understand right. the severity, the of severity, it and also you know the depths of of damage that you were doing right. to yourself. Right. Yeah. It's you a know? scene from it's, Jerry Maguire. I don't know if you remember this, but you know, it's, it's Kelly Preston is like, you know, I, we, we're brutally honest, and and Tom Tom Cruise is like, not that honest. You know, I don't need. <laughs> yeah. We don't need to do. That was exactly right. what like, it was we don't like. Need to like go My dad's everywhere. eyes just went huge. Like, yeah. right. do well, I laugh? Can I tell you something? Yeah. I think it's 
actually amazing because I think a lot of people, especially like me that came from religious homes or, or deal with that dogma, I would have loved to have been in that situation <laughs> because it almost makes you be brutally honest yeah. instead of hiding certain things. But you were also willing to be brutally honest, let's be real. I mean, a lot of the people that you were in treatment yeah. with, I'm sure, weren't. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's for me, by the time I got to this specific treatment center, which was in Arizona, where we were brutally honest, I had been in treatment for a long time and was really um, exhausted by the process and was, I had been, you know, I went too early. I did go too early, but it also kept me alive long enough to be able to get the message and to know where to go when I did want to go. And so, you know, there was, there were so many different components of it for me. Well, Andrew, you were talking about that last week and it was a great it was amazing and it got a lot of responses you saying um now i can't remember of course but you know <laughs> about raising the bottom right yeah know? well that's a lot of the movement now with interventionists and right now is trying to figure out how to and when we talk about bottoming out it means basically where you getting to the point where you've lost so much that you feel like you have to get treatment so a lot of what's going on now in therapeutic communities especially with interventionists people that go out and try and uh, convince people to, that they have a problem they need to get into treatment um, is they talk about raising the bottom. In other words, making what they have to lose less, mm-hmm. so, so right. that, but they still realize they have a problem and they get help for it. That's one of the reasons often I like to talk about, you know, you have use, abuse, and addiction. And abusing substances, you don't necessarily have to be an alcoholic to have a problem with alcohol mm. that requires some sort of treatment. Or dependence. I right. know a lot of people right. that are just dependent every dependent, day. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, how are you using it? It, it doesn't necessarily matter if whether or not you've reached full-blown alcoholism. Right. I mean, you don't have to get to the point where you're a full-blown chronic alcoholic right. Right. with right. the DTs every everything. morning you that you wake up. leaving yeah. Las Vegas. Yeah, you right. don't have to yeah. have your yeah. liver go out before you get help. You know, right. if, you, if you've become, if you've gotten to the point where you're, you feel like you can't really live life without involving alcohol in your life all the time right. that's the time to start looking at it and say hey you know what you know this could progress pretty easily into a problem that i can't control mm-hmm. and that's what it becomes it becomes a compulsive disorder that you cannot control mm-hmm. and consumes your life and will take everything away from you so if you don't have the ability to get that insight early that's what's that's the road you're going to go down mm-hmm. um and if you are able to get that insight then you have a chance to much easier less painful soft landing from mm-hmm. you know the problems of abusing um, alcohol and drugs and, and if you just tuned in you're listening to clean radio give us a call at 888-375-3613 that's 888-3, that's 888-375-3613 <laughs> I should remember that number so easily. It was my house my, growing up. That was my first three digits was 375. So you'd think it would be pretty easy. Well, Andrew. we're not doing therapy today, so we'll talk about that but later. You, yes. <laughs> you, you know what's been coming up, though? It's interesting you say that because I have had clients recently that, that that are kind of trying to figure out whether they have a problem or not. Right. Um, yeah. it, just, it just kind of came up in the past month. But one of the things is, is if you're nervous without... Um, having alcohol around like if you are anticipating your day and, you, and, you, and right. you're kind of watching the clock or when are you going to have the drink when what, can i have a drink if i go to dinner can i and if you start thinking in that way and even alcohol is in the forefront of your mind that is probably a red flag yeah that's an indicator well, that people that have, have anxiety yeah. disorders have a lot of what we call um uh, anticipatory anxiety prior to drinking. I keep seeing so yeah, like they right. they Thursdays their big night to get drunk. Right, and they wait and all they, week. They're and, waiting all week, yeah. and you know now we see uh, you know uh, anorexia, drunkorexia, they're calling it, where <laughs> women won't eat anything so they can so save they enough can calories drink. so yeah. they can drink and maintain their weight. Wow. I mean these are haven't chronic. they heard of bulimia? Yeah. No, yeah. Um, <laughs> we <laughs> at Vine Rock Recovery is kind of like this is kind of why we we started this is as a result of raising the bottom. Like that's right. that's a really great way to put it because people don't have to lose absolutely everything mm-hmm. before they get treatment and let's face it a lot of people die in accidents or from overdoses right. and stuff you know right. a lot of, most you don't people, know when yeah. you're so you you offer at lion rock you offer a different you know you order, offer 36 hours a month of treatment. right we offer a 30 an intensive outpatient program that's 36 hours like you know we follow asam samsa protocol and then we offer a 14 hour a month which is twice a week um, and and we we do groups and we do individual and it's treatment and and, you're, and it's, it's very great. inexpensive yeah and it's, it's very on, affordable it's, it's very affordable and it's online through video conference so you can they can see you you can see them and you don't have to come you know you can come to treatment even if you're trying to figure out whether or not you're right. an alcoholic. Well, that's one of the things right. I really liked about our conversation the other day when you really introduced us to everything that you're doing with your company and you, um, you talked about how you can act as a screening mechanism you can actually right. guide people to get the right. assistance right. they need locally 
or right. in another exactly. location. Yeah. If, if they're not yeah. a good fit, we send them, you know, if they, if they're so severe, they need detox. They, we, we send them to detox or to inpatient because we, you know, it's, it's not a perfect fit for everyone, but mm. we have a lot of clients who come in and they're managing, but it's a problem. It, it, there are consequences and they can get help before they lose the kids, the house. It sounds right. like you could combine it also. Like if someone be wanted to travel, right. they had exactly. to travel for we business. Have, we have someone who that travels. And, yeah. Yep. yeah. If yeah. you if they travel a lot, you can you know all you have to have is a computer that's three years old or newer and an internet connection, and you can get treatment. And is it twenty four hours a day? Um, we are. It, we have a program that's at nine thirty a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and then one at. Uh, 6 30 p.m pacific standard time and then for our two day a week program we have a one more edition which is at 3 p.m um and then the individual sessions are at the convenience of the client what i love mm. too by the way is that they urine test people and they, it's basically Sal- yeah, almost saliva. fail safe saliva test. yeah saliva no. test saliva <laughs> test <laughs> 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 we, urine test might be a little awkward yeah, like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> i'm sure if somebody's doing it yeah yeah we don't <laughs> urine test you on yeah. video but we no. do so we can saliva was, test you yeah, yeah. this is interesting they do have a new test now yeah. that checks for alcohol even right alcohol, alcohol drugs and it's uh you swap it in your mouth right yep. yeah you swap it in your mouth and so, and uh, we'll we have you do it during group at, at random and um and then you're able to send that in and there's a confirmation code and um it's by a company orisher and we're really excited about it because it it adds a level of accountability that a lot of people were right. skeptical about in the beginning about right. you know online treatment. Yeah, we actually have free drug tests available if people have they want to test their kids or if they have problems oh, that cool. they maybe want to test their spouse. You can go to uh, cleantreatmentcenter.com and order a free drug test. That's so great. we uh, That's send great. those out for free. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. You, you guys lost yeah. me for a second also uh, because uh, Kelly uh, Coughlin, who's uh, owner of uh, Melrose PR and Ashley's PR person and a close friend you've been on the show has created this amazing thing. Um, Andrew and I are going to walk around proudly. <laughs> I didn't this, know you uh, created that. Purse case. With oh, this purse case, cute. by the way. And uh, it's really cool. And uh, go on Kickstarter. Uh, and uh, you want to come on the mic for a second so you could tell us. Um, but this is really cool. And uh, I'm, I had to say it because I'm really distracted by this and I want to, I, I love this Kickstarter thing, by the way. Well, this radio, you should, you should probably describe what it looks like. It's, oh, that's yeah. true. People are listening <laughs> on the radio. He's it's just holding it up. Because like, we it. we're on video. Oh, well, we are. And, yeah. But, you know, and it's, it, right, but I forget that people are actually <laughs> listening to us on, via radio. So um, they have this amazing purse kit and you could stick it's your iPhone. It's an iPhone case. Your iPhone 5, your iPhone. <laughs> Erica, why don't you okay, explain I will. I will. The girls are like, wait, no, that's not what it is. It's an iPhone case that looks like kind of like an Hermé bag, right? Like a Chanel, a Chanel Hermé bag. Yeah, a Chanel bag. It has padding in the back and a little gold, uh, what is this exactly? Little now gold we're getting into handle. a micro description. Oh my yeah. God, yeah. Basically, <laughs> but it's, an iPhone, it's an iPhone case. It comes for iPhone 4 and iPhone 5, and it's uh, essentially like a purse. So you can right. put your credit cards, ID, and cash and business in cards it. right in it. Oh, and go wow. to Kickstarter. Where do they go on Kickstarter? Kickstarter, and then you can search for purse case, or to make it easier, you can this just go to cool. PurseCase.com. Okay. And, uh, and click on the link, back us on Kickstarter. We have till March cool. 29th to raise um, a hefty chunk of change. 35000 is our goal, and we have to meet that in order to raise any. So I really need all the support that we can get. And um, my business partner and I were busy publicists, and um, this sort of came out of a, a need for something more convenient to go out with. And It's, it's a rough easy. life, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> it is an adorable case, and it's for a good cause. So and it is for great. a great cause. Yeah. So thank you, Kelly Coughlin. I want to really thank you for bringing Ashley to my attention because I never would have uh, found uh, Lion Rock Recovery if it weren't for you. And how do people get to you, Ashley? People, um, if you go to www.lionrockrecovery.com, you can. Um, we have a live chat, or we have a phone number, a seven six zero. Nine nine four four nine nine zero. Look at the memory. It's yeah. all because you're sober. <laughs> she yeah. Yeah. One more time. yeah. Can you teach Judah how to it's, do this yeah. for the radio show? Seven six zero nine nine four four nine nine zero. And that's lionrockrecovery.com. Lionrockrecovery.com. Lionrock is one word, and we're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, wherever. Just type it in, and you'll find us. And cool. you know, give us a call if you have any questions. I got to tell you something really cool that Ashley also have is has is she came up with this amazing idea. Yeah. And this was really what intrigued me, other than Kelly referring you, was you did this thing called Faces in Recovery. What? Where on Facebook, <laughs> you... 
This that, is what sober looks like. I'm sorry, I was that close. That face is, in, <laughs> is different. Yeah, uh, what sober looks like. I wanted to, um, I, f- I feel like, especially as a young person, that there are a lot of people have an idea of yeah. what sober looks like. And I wanted to... Um, post photos of people I know who are in recovery and people I also don't know um, to show people that sober looks like all sorts of different things. That's it, a great you idea. Know, that it looks like families. It looks yeah. like single people. It looks like cool people, nerdy right. people, whatever it is. And so uh, what sober looks like dot com. Is I've been begging her to put up a picture of me, but she's refused. Apparently. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. You need to do it's, something with your hair. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> I, it's, that's that's but, an incredible idea. Yeah, it is. It's an amazing idea. It's all I, walks I think of life. It touches everyone. You didn't, you didn't make the cut judah what's yeah. up with yeah, that? yeah we have we have a screening it's a, process it's a little, they're, su- they're suspect but I, that's yeah. how much i like the, the what they do it's that a great i still concept. you know that's that i was great. like even though you won't put me up i'll still you know i just it. wanted to really get one stat out there right before we, and we're yeah. running out of time here and um we, we've been talking a lot about people getting help and one of the things that one of the articles actually was on our website uh recently um, about how only 10% of people that have a problem actually get help for addiction wow. mm. which is really kind of shocking so um yeah. You know, a lot of what we're trying to do here is get people to, you know, uh, realize that there is help and and try and uh, bring more people into recovery. And I think that's the same thing that you're talking about is showing people that, you know, there's a good way to get in there and the results are positive. And right. That that everybody can. There are different ways for everyone, whether, you know, it's through clean treatment or you online or whatever. However, you got to get to the helpful place. You know, and I think, like you said before, I think it's so cool, Andrew, what you're saying about and I never really thought about this, this thing with the continuum of care. Mm-hmm. As long as you're on the ship, mm-hmm. there's a chance right. you're going to, you right. know. Yeah, and I think that a lot of the work that we've been doing with clean with treatment providers, not just uh, here in the United States, but also in Britain, um, is trying to talk about that continuum of care and mm-hmm. getting to re- people to realize, you know, with AA, we're not, you know, treatment center isn't against AA because right. we don't necessarily use AA all the time. We incorporate AA into what we're doing. Right. And everybody really should be on the same side of the table working towards getting people sober and getting people healthy. That's yeah. the goal. And yeah. we're running out of time, by the way. Yeah. I want to thank you again, Ashley Loeb from Lion Rock Recovery. Awesome. Um, it's really an amazing program. Yeah, and everybody you. out there that's listening right now, you know, it, it takes a lot of guts and courage to call a show like this and say on the air yeah. you have a mm-hmm. problem. Yeah. Give us a call at 888-601-6040 if you're a little, you know, if you're scared to call or go to Ashley's, you know, go to Lion Rock Recovery, go to cleanradio.com. Yeah. You know, there's so many, and, and we're not saying we're going to, we'll, we'll talk to you and we'll make it the, yeah. the thing, this thing as easy as it can be. Cause it, Andrew, this is one of the hardest And I'll things. send, I'll send yeah. articles to anybody yeah. that needs any, any of them, you know, I'm more than Yeah, you actually to. do. This is really cool I to do. hear so that, that. Let let people know that and they can you, contact me and at ericaspiegelman.com yeah. and I'll send them, you know, like I sent Mary some great stuff on boundaries. It's just helpful to have. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody out there that's, uh, I mean, I want to thank everybody that helps put on the show. I want to thank Nikki, who came in, who gen- Thanks, generously Nikki. gave her her time. I want to thank Rand. I want to thank, you know, Kelly from I want to thank Judah. Judah. Thanks, you know, Judah. And Andrew, you're not going to be here for the next couple weeks. I'm going to be in England. But Erica, the 8th through the 18th, Fab, but I'll Spiegel, be back. I'll be here. Be in, yep. And uh, I want to just tell everybody out there, uh, if you're tuning in, Miss Fortune Radio is on next on KAB, 790 KABC. We'll talk to you in a few. Thank you. Thank you. Are you struggling with an addiction that's ruining your life? Want to have a confidential conversation with a professional that will immediately assist you? Do you suspect a loved one is abusing drugs and would like a free drug testing kit and consultation? Clean Treatment Center is standing by right now to help those with addictions and the people who care about them. Call 888-601-6040. That's 888-601-6040. Or go to Clean Treatment Center, that's clean with a K, cleantreatmentcenter.com.